Hello and welcome back to How to Connect with Humans. This is series four and it's the first episode. Hello Wayne, how are you? Hello, how are you? You all good? Good. Oh, this is so exciting. I know. This was going to be one talk. One talk when the first quarantine started. We are now on February of 2021. So this was uh, almost a year ago probably yeah. not yet but um it was going to be just one talk and then in turn into one series and that series into another and our idea was to uh share the principles that help change our lives um from what sydney banks who was the one that uncover the principles and then he was so generous to go around and share them with other people um so that understanding changed our lives so much yes. and we've seen so many people have incredible changes so he started sort of like this as far as far as we know and christine can tell us differently if not but he sort of started in his living room just just with friends and neighbors and people that whoever would come around to listen so today we have a uh, opening series for somebody we absolutely adore Absolutely. We love her passion. Um, she's so vibrant and fantastic. Very strong woman. Um, she met Sid more than 40 years ago. And then she carried on his legacy. And she's going to talk about all this. So, uh, but one of the things she wanted to talk especially was uh, looking within for the secret of love. So Christine Heath. It's a pleasure to have you here. Well, Nona, thank you so much. How are you? You know, thank you so much for asking me to do this. I've been watching on Facebook the various people that you've had on, and it's just such a delightful uh, thing to offer people and a way to kind of connect, right? It's like, it's it, one of the things I was thinking about when you talked to me about a, um, a topic is that I'm a marriage and family therapist by trade. And uh, so that is kind of like how human, how human beings connect has kind of been my thing since before. And the reason I became a marriage and family therapist was because back in the day, they were the only people that were kind of looking at people as healthy, but just having trouble interacting. You know, that, that it was like, if we could fix these interactions, then people would be fine. And I thought that made a lot more sense to me than um, kind of analyzing yourself at nauseam, which kind of the Freudian way of anal analysis was popular when I was uh, first coming into this work. I mean, into the work of being a therapist. But um, what's interesting to me about this is that in my work as a marriage and family therapist is that people are really looking to connect with somebody else like they're looking for that feeling of love to come from their partner like if you would just um um like I, i've got this one couple i'm working with and and he would say that if she would just get back to the way she was when she was 19 and i married her then i would be happy and he's pretty convinced that that would be the case that that her she's getting uppity and she has her own thoughts and she's and of course it's my fault because she's talking to me and she's getting more secure and it and so he gets really caught up thinking that his insecurity his bad feeling is coming from his wife's changing right and so usually when couples come in they they come in and talk to me about how they're unhappy because of some other person their child their parent their significant other their um, boss. It's it's the the reason I have a job is because human beings have trouble connecting. Yeah, like that's the whole deal. And and there's a blind spot that we have because it really looks like the outside world is what's creating how we feel. And so you know when you fall in love with somebody or you meet somebody and you get a really good feeling, it seems like that feeling is coming from that person. So if you made me happy and now I'm no longer happy, it must be your fault too, right? So you change so I can get that feeling back again. 
And so that's kind of what I've been doing. I wrote a book with uh, Lori Carpinos called The Secret of Love, uh, Unlocking the Mystery, which is looking at why is this such a mystery to people? Like, why do we have a, why do I, why is there a marriage and family therapy vocation? You know, that human beings have such a hard time living in love with each other. And the magic is when you find out that that feeling of love really doesn't come from anybody else. Like you can't be loved enough, right? It's like your experience of love is coming from within you because it comes from the energy of life, right? It's like, it's what we are really. We are love. And sometimes even the, the word love, I think gets a, get we, we get thoughts about it. So it feels like people say, well, I just don't feel in love with my wife anymore. I just don't feel that way anymore. Well, when you're not in a state of uh, mental well-being, you generally don't feel love for much. You know, it's like you might uh, occasionally get a hit of something you really like. I really like chocolate or something, but you know, it's not that same kind of deep connected feeling that we get when we get quiet. So Sometimes people like I, I know in the three principles where people talk a lot about being in the feeling, the feeling, the feeling, which is really, really important. But the feeling is not only just a feeling of happiness or love, but it's really that feeling of being connected at a deeper level. And we are always connected at that level. And then we think, and then we create this experience with our thoughts that makes it feel like we are not connected. So when people get really depressed, they get really anxious, they sometimes feel like they're in kind of a glass dome where they're looking out at life and they can see people and people can see them, but they don't feel connected. And it's, it's puzzling because like, why is this? What's wrong with me that I don't feel this way? And that's really just the product of too much thinking. So the more insecure thinking we're doing, the more we create a feeling of being disconnected. So connection is easy. Awakening to how you're creating a disconnect is where we get blinded by our own thinking. So it's kind of like, um, like, like to me, the whole Zoom thing has been really a, a, a miraculous thing because like we've done a couple of um, uh, three, I think, conferences now online. And each one that we do gets better than the last one. And the more we make it um, about us together, the more connected people feel, the more, the, the more people feel like we're in this together, in a sense, in this feeling together. And we're thousands of miles away. You know, like it's, it's like the proof that the connection that we have has nothing to do with real time or, or the experience, even real time because you can watch it online later and get hit by it. And that's, that's amazing. If you think about it, that's really amazing that we can feel that level of connection, not know the people, be thousands of miles away at different times of our day with coffee or without coffee. You know, it's like, it, it doesn't matter when we go inside and you know that metaphor is a was a hard one for me as I go inside what are you talking about trying to figure that out but it's really just like stepping back in yourself before thought because when you're connected with that feeling you kind of love everybody I mean when I'm in a really good space I feel compassion for people that I think are doing bad things in the world or, you know, like I don't hate them, but sometimes if I get a reaction, I'm like, ah, I can't believe this president. I mean, I, I have my thoughts about the president of the United States and um, they, they weren't always very positive. And, um, and then I'd like, oh yeah, he's just a guy, poor guy, he's so caught up in his thinking and he doesn't know it. And then that brings me back to feeling love. And one of the things I'm, kind of discovering is that love is a motivating factor. It's like, it's a, the motivation to change the world. 
Because if we see that we are all love and we are all the same, then the only thing that keeps us separate is our own thinking. And thinking is not even real. It has no form. It's just this thing that we're able to do. So I kind of, when I do these things, I, I do a lot better. Um, I feel it's more beneficial to people to, that we all kind of share together and that we, so if you, anybody has any questions as we kind of talk about this or move on, I, I mean, I can talk forever, so it, it, that's not a problem. But if people have questions, I think it becomes more relevant and people get more out of it if we're just talking amongst ourselves, because I'm just one person, I can connect with my wisdom and, and my love, but um, we're all the same. So what comes out of each one of us is so beautiful. And it's just becomes a much deeper experience, I think. So does anybody have any questions? Anything? If you have any questions, you can either unmute yourself or put your hand up. Uh, you have a virtual hand there, or you could just, oh, there we are, Stuart has a question. So uh, there we go. You may have to unmute yourself as well. There we go. Yeah, I will take off my hand. Oh. Uh, I, I, it's, I find it really interesting what you're talking about, because lately and, and like the last year, that's kind of what I've been seeing, um, that I'm loving my core. Uh, we all have this kind of innate connection and I don't have to do anything to get that connection. Um, I was just wondering whether you could talk a bit more about that, about the, about the, the kind of connection that we all ultimately have uh, with each other and with everything. Well, mind is the energy that creates us all. It's a word that we use to describe the life force. The life force is what's coming through each one of us right now. It's what's giving life to our experience. So I often, I kind of think about it like we're all part of this big, like an octopus and each one of us is like a tentacle and we're all connected to the head, but what we're experiencing is what's on the end of the tentacle. Right. And so if we just turn around and see that we're connected to this incredible source of life, it's an incredible intelligence. It's an incredible feeling. And when that comes through us and we're talking from that feeling, other people kind of wake up to that feeling in them because it's the same thing. Like you and I, like all of us, we're the same thing talking to each other through different screens like screen here, screen there, but it's, it is just the same thing. So in my mind, like to me, that energy is, can be, you can look at it as a positive energy or you can look at it as a neutral energy. It just is. I personally like to think of it as a positive energy, but there's a, a sense to me when we're connected to that, that we're um, very secure. So sometimes I think we get it mixed up where we think about love as this really positive feeling like, oh, I'm going to be happy all the time or I'm never going to be upset about anything. But that's not really that feeling of love. Love is coming from a place of security, of connectedness to the wisdom of all things. So sometimes that comes across as uh, a beautiful feeling. Sometimes it comes across as certainty. Sometimes it comes across as knowing. So, sorry, <laughs> my old boy came running in. <laughs> you talking about love, mama? <laughs> go, go away. Go on. So even, but even in animals, you know, it's like the energy of life comes through them and they have this, kind of intelligence as well, sometimes much better than ours. Like I, I do scent training with the dogs where they, they, they learn to pick up scents. And it's amazing to me how they can think for themselves, how they can figure things out. 
kind of driving me nuts now. Okay, good. Sorry about that. Now, I love this dog to death. You know, he's my 13 year old and he just gets so excited and then he huffs and puffs like that. But now he's laying down. I was like, oh, okay, I'll lay down now be, and be good. And he's just relaxed and he moves back into that state of being more calm and peaceful. So, you know, sometimes when we have to, like one of the things that I'm, I'm working on in my life is that I'm a member of a, a political party and the political party in my state has been very um, in charge of anything for centuries. Now in, in, in that position, the Hawaiian people have been totally uh, screwed over by the government. Um, they have no uh, political entity. They have no legal entity. They, they're, they've been just really uh, left out. And as a result, there's a huge level of poverty and illness. And, and we were having a discussion about the last election and a lot of Hawaiians voted for Donald Trump. And they, they were talking about how, well, why is this? I said, well, duh, why do you think? because the Democrats have been in power and we haven't done anything to change things. We're the ones as a Democrat that has caused this and has perpetuated it. And you could see like people were like, oh, wow, I never thought about that. Because, you know, we think of ourselves in a certain way and how we're we take care of people, blah, blah, blah. But to me, that's coming from love. Like that's connecting with people at a deeper level to get people to wake up and see how our thinking keeps us separate, keeps uh, the world in a place where we're not really all living in love together. So I don't know if that's confusing or not, but to me, that's kind of my thing that I'm, I'm, I'm awakening to is that energy of life is what, what allows us to change and loving the world, loving each other and coming from love also means that you gotta change things. It also means that you have to be different in your life. So you're, when you find, or you wake up to that, you start to see ways that you get out of that feeling of love with people or that you treat other people in a way that's not coming from a place of connectedness. So we're all a part of that energy. It's like, you can't, you can't not be. So you can't not have love. You can't not be the love. That's, that's really just a word. Like in, in religion, frequently people will say that God is love. To me, it's the energy of life that is love. And that as a human being, we have to be connected to that. We have to be a part of that. And that's what guides us. It's like, that's what guides us to, to in real time feel connected to people is that we go back to the source. We go back to the power that's within us to see beyond our own thinking. And that's to me like that, that, that's what we all have to do is take on our own blind spots to make the world a better place. We have to take on our own blind spots in our relationships. We have to take on our own blind spots in uh, the way that we treat the planet. And we can do that in a way that's uplifting and positive and comes from a great place, but we, we have to see how to change. So it's not only waking up to that, but it's also living from that. And listening to your wisdom as to what to do and trusting that, like we just really trust our intellect way too much. <laughs> you know, it's like, we, 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 we love to think don't we? We all love to think. And um, we kind of think our thinking's pretty good. Like, I remember when, when I was first married, my husband told me once, he said, he said, um, you know, you think you know everything. I said, well, honey, the problem is I know so much. It's hard for me to tell when I don't. And so he laughed. He thought that was funny. But, you know, it's kind of like, that connection is, is interesting to me because we can be all caught up in our differences and how we're upset about this thing. Like, I don't know if you've ever had a, an argument with somebody, you get in an argument with somebody and you don't even know what you're arguing about. 
right? It's like after a while, you're kind of in the middle of the argument, like, what is this about anyway? Like, I don't, I don't even know what this is about, but you keep going anyway, just to make one more point. And it is like, so we get so attached to our thinking and then the way that we see life from that. And instead of like being interested in being right, we want to be interested in what's like, what can we see differently? How can we go deeper? How can we find a deeper connection with people in our lives? So it's not just surfacy, because when you get connected head to head, that's where trouble happens. When you're connected heart to heart, you can do anything. So it's just kind of getting back to that. So did that answer your question? It's kind of a long answer, but was that helpful? Yeah, yeah, it was really helpful. Thank you. Yeah, it was. Um... Yeah, it's just something I kind of realized in conversations that I've had that, you know, when I don't try and get that connection, it kind of, it, it kind of just comes, the, the, the rapport comes from yeah. that. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's, um, I think we're always creative, we're always creative energy. We are creative energy at our core. It's mm -hmm. whether we use that positively from love or, or kind of, I guess, negatively and create mm -hmm. negative. Well, you know, the other thing, too, is that the other thing that's fascinating to me is how you can meet someone that you know nothing about, like at the grocery store and you or in an airplane. Like I, I was flying home from L.A. and I started talking to this woman in the airplane with me about some politics or something. And we've become fast friends after that. It's just like, boom, we were like good friends and. And that's just how our friendship started. If you think about it, that's kind of how we do it. Like you just start talking to somebody and suddenly you feel connected to them. You feel, and then as you talk, you have things in common, right? It's like all of a sudden you, you find these ways of, of like, oh yeah, I do that too. Oh yeah, I like that. And it's amazing to me how you can feel connected to the grocery store clerk. You know, like you go there periodically and you start talking and pretty soon it's like they're your friend. And that's what a friend is, I think, is that feeling of connectedness. Yeah, but that's always a, just totally amazing to me that you can know no, nothing about the person and feel like you've been friends forever. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And people, yeah. people do that sometimes with their relationships. They'll think like, oh, this is my soulmate. And I'm thinking like, well, the truth is we're all soulmates. <laughs> so your soulmate could be anybody. But when you connect at that level, like soul to soul, it feels special. It feels magical. Avia, are you uh, been muted? Yes, yes, I am. Thank you. I just wanted to share something, uh, Christine, something that I haven't really thought about for many years. And it just came to my mind listening to you. Oh my gosh, about. Oh, I've turned about 15 years ago, approximately 15 years ago. I remember I, it's just, you're talking about the connection and so forth. I've never shared this, never really came up with anyone, not even close friends. I um, remember one after one morning or something, I was um, sort of in prayer and talking to someone I was in the room on my own and I was just talking more connecting just talk I mean there was somebody we had a it wasn't a bad ending we just uh, and it wasn't a romantic uh, relationship it was just friends also and we just sort of drifted apart and I remember having the person came to my mind often and I thought and I just connected with that person that's the only way I can explain it and then I and I, I there was a bit of prayer involved in that connection if I recall and I felt lighter and just very light after that prayer that connection with my heart with that person and I wasn't asking for anything and then I just felt good right go and went off to the gym the gym is about 15 minutes drive i'd gone swimming finished swimming approximately an hour and a half back i got back in the car 
and there's voice message on my phone and I don't even have this person's number by the way anymore and there's a voice message a quite a you know a voice message sort of somebody saying uh, uh, um, it's me and I'm not really sure why I'm calling but I had over about an hour and a half ago no so the person said about 20 50, no the person said for the last 15 20 minutes I can't seem to do anything else but I had to call you I don't even know why I'm calling you I just needed to call you and I'm calling you and and the person seemed a bit like um as if they were stumbling and this is a very person who's very articulate but this person was stumbling on the phone because that I could hear in the voice they were trying to figure out why they were calling me and then they said well anyway I hope you're okay but I just I just I couldn't do anything else I just had to call you and that was it I I heard that message and I just I was blown away because it was round it was that time and the, the, the mess that I had connected with that person on some level and I didn't feel the need to call that person back or ask anything or do anything else yeah and it's just it's really made me believe that in the oneness and I've had other experiences similar to that but that one I think is the one that um, really surprised me yeah you know, we all have experiences like that don't we it's like and, and when it happens it, there's a part of you that's like that says like oh this is so cool and there's kind of a magic about it like I wonder how that all works I wonder what that is but it, because it happens to all of us, we know it. And then it's like, oh, okay, something I can't think about. Hmm, for some reason, my. I lost my gallery for some reason. Sorry. 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 Did you get, can you get to a gallery again? Yeah. So that's, that's a great story because, you know, those things happen a lot. And especially if you're listening, right? If you're really listening, like how many times do people say, oh, I knew I should have called her. Oh, I knew I should have gone over there. Like it's there, but we're not really very good at listening to that anymore. Like we're not really very good at that. When my husband first went off to college, his father, who was a pure Hawaiian, told him, he said, he said, boy, just remember to listen when you're there. Just remember to listen. He said, at the time, I didn't even know what he meant. He said, I, I was just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my dad tell me. He's 19, you know. And he said, but the truth is, is that that's really that listening for your own wisdom, listening for the feeling of things is the best guide you can that you can get in this world. And, and we have all kinds of information that we can get from that. It's, it's just amazing to me when those things happen. But that's, that, that, that's kind of the magic of how we're all connected up to the head. It's kind of like the central repository of information and, and, and wisdom and truth. And we get, when we, when we tune in, we can get a really good, some really good ideas and we get information about things. We don't even know why we're getting it. Like, uh, why am I thinking about this person? Um, and it's just kind of interesting that that spiritual nature, I'm not sure we know that much about it, right? I'm not sure we know really um, how, how that all works, but we all know it does. You know, we all know that we connect at that level. Yeah, because what for me was, um, I heard in that person's voice that the puzzlement as to why they were calling me, because even she didn't know why she was calling me. I could hear it in her words, and but she just had to call me. And yeah. <laughs> and I just felt it had nothing to do with me or her. It was, you know, it was the unseen power doing what he needed to do. 
I'll tell you a funny story about that. When I um, first moved to Hawaii and we had a clinic over on Oahu and Sid Banks came over to speak with our staff and to speak with some people from the community. And after he was done, he uh, wanted to call his house in Maui, somebody was staying there and he was gonna call and talk to whoever was there. So he went in the office and he made the call he came back and he said, there's something wrong with your phone. Every time I dial my number, I end up at the Advanced Human Studies Institute, which was kind of the only other, one of the other two clinics in the world at the time. And I said, oh, don't be ridiculous. You, do you have one of those like speed dials that if you push one, it automatically dials a number? I said, no, 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 we, we don't have that. And, and so I go in there and I do it myself and I plug in the number and it rings in Florida. I was like, this is so weird. I said, I guess you're supposed to call them. So then we switched phones and it, it, and it, it got through that. It was very interesting. Th those kinds of little magical kind of moments are always, if you're walking around looking for the magic, it makes life a lot less frustrating. If you're like trying to make life work the way you want it to and you're not listening for the magic, Sometimes you miss those things. Anybody else want to add anything or share or tell a story or ask a question? I remember Christine and I think it was the last, um, may have been the last, uh, London conference we had in person where you, where you came here. And I think it was the time uh, there were like volcanoes or one particular volcano erupted. Uh, and But especially one of the things that happened is it went underneath. And, and then it was sort of, and I remember you um, uh, sort of talking about that as, as you would talk as, as like, I remember that was so beautiful it just woke me up to realize that sometimes when I see these synchronicities where I see that say I've gone in a better place thinking about somebody else like my mom or, or my dad when he was alive or and then I didn't know how to sort out something or how to we're in a bad connection and, and then something you know we we started talking or we're in a better place or something happened or something appeared and um, and I went. Savia was saying that, and and uh, you may want to talk about that volcano thing. What what I realized is now. Oh, okay. So it's like we're using a different telephone line to communicate. We're just communicating in a different way that we didn't realize. But that that message got across. Um, yeah. Yeah, the, the, it, what she's talking about is when the volcano um, erupted on my island, it, a lot of people think that there's two different kinds of volcanoes, I didn't even know this, is that there's the kind that blows up and like, you know, tosses earth everywhere. And then this is a kind where it kind of comes up and there's fissures in the earth. So the lava goes out on the side. And it's that's like this understanding, like as we learn it, as we awaken to it, that's a better way of saying it. Um, and you're walking around in this feeling of love and in this feeling of wonder, in this feeling of truth. Other people, because they're, they are that too, they wake up too. And it kind of goes out from you without you doing anything, right? It's like, like, you know, like my, my mother came in and, and started learning this after I changed and she told me, she said, you, honey, you tell your clients that if this can work for you, it can work for anybody. And I changed so much that, you know, she came in and wanted to see it. And that's kind of really what happens. It's like the deeper you go, the more it goes out from you without even wanting to, like, you know, you're not trying to share the principles. You're not trying to share this understanding. You're not, trying to do anything you're just being yourself and the more you do that the more you live in in a beautiful life you know like for me it was like as i learned to live differently that 
that was like interesting to people like, oh, you're moving to Hawaii? Do you have a job? No. Do you know anybody there? No. Well, why are you going there? I said, why not? Sounds like it's a beautiful place to live. Why wouldn't I go there and create a beautiful life? Well, well what are you going to do? I said, I don't know. I think I'm going to start another clinic, but who knows? And, you know, there's just this way that that would get people interested. I said, the work that I do will, will be taken better in Hawaii than New York because the culture here the Hawaiian culture is already identified that living in aloha is living in an understanding of the principles. That's really what mental health is. I think they kind of identified what mental well-being was uh, first. So it's like talking about that and making it be something that's socially acceptable. I thought, oh, now this is going to go much better here than it would be, like, say, in New York City. Although I'm sure there are a lot of people in New York City that I don't want to offend anybody, but you know, that was just kind of my thinking is like people that are already kind of awake to it. So when you start to share it, it goes out from you. And Sid used to always tell us is he'd say, that's how you know if you're coming from your head or you're coming from wisdom is what happens around you. Because as your level of consciousness change, your world must change. And it will go out from you. People will like, hey, you like if you listen to some of his old tapes, he's he's got a couple and he, he said, he says, you're walking around and you talk to somebody and they go, oh, and you go, oh, you too. And it's like when we, you know, it's like those of us that have kind of awakened to this as we talk to each other. Right. There's like, oh, yeah, you see this, too. And there's like another deeper connection that comes from that. Because you know that you know. And then this person knows it kind of funny. It's like, oh, yeah, we're in on the joke. And, and, and it's like seeing that, I think, is um, the depth that, that, that we connect there is what then puts it out into the world in a more um, powerful way. But it's sneaking out anyway. You know, like when I first started to uh, be a therapist, there, it was if you were ther positive doing therapy, you were considered a bad therapist. You know, like now there's a whole positive psychology. It's, it's, it has impacted people without us even realizing it. It's like the level of consciousness changes and people just start doing things differently. They start acting differently. Now, is the level of consciousness of the world high enough yet? Oh, no, absolutely not. But it, you can see as it goes out the possibilities, right? You can see how people awaken and then they create a nice life for themselves. They create a beautiful way of um, interacting with their families and their loved ones and things settle down in their life and they get quieter and they just have a deeper experience of life altogether. Now that to me is that's connecting with that feeling of love on the inside. But I, I it's like, I don't know about you guys, but I was going, you know, like a bat out of hell. I was very speeded up and the idea of like, like I remember my teacher went to a, uh, uh, a meeting in Hawaii with Sid and he came back and started listening to Hawaiian music. And I thought, oh, God save me if I ever start listening to Hawaiian music, you know, and then I not only, you know, moved to Hawaii, married a Hawaiian, I dance hula, I, I'm totally like, who knew that was going to happen from that thought, right? It's like, um, it was, it's just interesting how things kind of unfold as you go toward that feeling. And it'll unfold in a way that's perfect for you. Like that's not, we don't want everybody in the world to move to Hawaii because it's not really about Hawaii. It's just finding the place that you feel good and creating a reality for yourself where that feeling is coming to life. And, and making changes in your life. You know, like I could feel myself like get really stressed about things and I'm like, oh, I think I'm working too much. Okay, I got to change that. But, and so even to this day, it's like, okay, what do I need to change here? What do I need to do differently? Because when I change, I'm alive again. You know, it's like, I see something deeper and it's like, and this is 40 years, I've been doing this 40 years. There's very few people 
that have do been doing their work for 40 years consecutively that are as jazzed about doing it as I am. And that's because I know I don't know anything. Right. And so when I get a little piece of it or I wake up to something, it's like such a gas and I feel so uh, it feels so um, I feel so grateful for the opportunity to be uh, continually learning and seeing things differently and creating realities where I can feel better. Thomas, you can tell me. Oh. Hi, Christine. Hi. Hi. Yes, I got a question from a friend today and I couldn't really answer it. So I'm passing it on <laughs> to this Zoom meeting. Uh, she asked me if, but how about needs, uh, human needs like food and connection and everything? Is that also thought or how is that? Can you talk a bit about that? How, how you see it or? Well, we can get a little hairy fairy when we talk about everything's thought. I mean, the truth is, is everything is thought. I mean, even the astrophysicists say that the universe is thought. So, okay, big deal. So needs and wants are, um, Are, I mean, they're real. If someone's not eating, they need to eat, right? So it's not just like, oh, well, if you're starving to death, just find a good feeling and you'll be okay. <laughs> but, but you know, the, so the, the truth is, is that you have to use common sense. I mean, to me, that's the deal. It's like, what's, what's the common sense thing to do here? So we all have certain needs in order to live in this reality. You know, we have to eat, we have to have water, we have to like not ingest a lot of chemicals. Like there's lots of things that we all in, at this level of consciousness have to uh, um, kind of make sure that we're taken care of. So that's kind of the thing to me is like, as we wake up and we see how our thinking goes, we're able to change those things. So helping people that um, have needs that they, need met is of course we would want people to be able to do that but sometimes what happens is that if you understand how thought works you can get out of your thinking of kind of staying stuck where you're at you know like um if like I was listening to this guy talk and he said that he was, he was living in a, an area of a uh, town that was, had a lot of problems in and a lot of um, drugs and crime and that kind of thing. And he said that he walked by every day, he walked by um, a yard, an, an empty lot. And he just saw it as a place where there's a lot of like old needles and junk and was really trashed. He said, and then after he started learning the principles, one day he walked by it and he saw a playground. And then what he did is he started to work to see how to make that happen. So we have to, of course, make sure that people are fed and have their needs met. I mean, right now, especially in the pandemic, you can see that not having those things gets people very afraid because we know that we need to be have to eat to survive. We know that we need those things. So the more we can help each other, again, see so you come back to that place where we're all in it together, we see how to help each other to survive and live in this reality, then we work on doing that. So to me, it's kind of like not saying like, oh yeah, that's, that's too bad for those people. They don't have any money. That's too bad they lost their job. You know, it's kind of like, it's not, not I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to be retired, but you know, I'm, um, I'm not bothered by that, but that's not what I do. I look at this world like, oh, some of us are really struggling with this. What can I do to help? So I don't know if that answers your question. I mean, the experience that we're having is still all being created by thought, but it, we don't want to minimize that. You know, it's like, common sense is what can we do to help? What can we do for ourselves to help? What can we do to make things different in our life? So, you know, it's like sometimes we get new ideas and 
we get, I mean, that's where kind of brilliance comes. I was listening to um, the governor of one of the states in the US that's doing a really good job of getting the vaccination out, the vaccine into people. And they were interviewing him. And he said, you know, it's not rocket science. He said, you look, where's the goal? Old people, where are old people? Send the people there first, get in the shots. How can we make this accessible? Okay, everybody's got a relationship with their pharmacist, have the pharmacist do it. He said, we didn't overthink it. We didn't get into what's, what's, the, what, what's the process we're gonna have and trying to get this whole thing written down ahead of time. We just did it. And I sent, he said, I sent in the National Guards and just gave people the shot. So, you know, it's, it's kind of that feeling like he just didn't get caught up in his head. And so he was able to see this is a need, this is a population we need to do it, and this is how we can do it. And to me, that's kind of how we, we live in a world and make it better. Now, we don't sit around and say, oh, I'm in a really good place. Sorry, those people over there are dying. You know, that's, that's insecurity because we see ourselves separate. I know that's one of the things that happened to me. I mean, you know, I, I, I'm thinking I'm pretty good because I'm married to a Hawaiian. I live in this place where white people are, you know, in the minority. And um, it's, um, I, I feel like I'm pretty, I was pretty awake to this. And then as we we're sitting home watching the, the Black Lives Matter movement go, I'm like, oh man, what the heck? Yeah, look how you have not made this, your, this, these are not your people. These are not your problem. You've got to do something about this. And to me, that's kind of where that question comes from. It's like, it's like, what about this? Well, if we're living from a feeling of love and we're feeling connected to everybody, then we want to help everybody like our family. We want to help everybody that we know, because if everybody is rises up, we all rise up. So I think it's sometimes people are like, well, you shouldn't talk about political things or you shouldn't talk about things that need to change. And to me, it's like, that's the whole point of this, right? The whole point that Sid would say of bringing this into the world is to relieve the suffering of the world. And we want to relieve the suffering of the world. We have to not only see how to relieve our own, but to see how to get this out and to make the world a place that's the manifestation of living in love. Christine, can I ask a question? Please. I'll cheer myself on. I'm at work, so. Um, can you talk about um, dealing with like difficult relationships or people, um, family members or whoever who have like a mental illness or, you know, how to work with that? Um, I'm not even sure of the question, but you know, like that yeah. type of thing difficulties and relationships, I guess? Well, I mean, to make it simple, if you're having stress over a relationship, that means that you want to focus on what you're doing, not what they're doing. So what happens is, is that people tend to focus on what they have no control over. You know, the serenity prayer, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change and the courage to change the things I can. I think it should be rewritten to God has already granted you serenity. And so what can you do? And what are you thinking about that you have no ability to change at all? So is, and then the wisdom, right, is the intelligence that comes from serenity, the wisdom to know the difference. So it's really seeing how to stay in a feeling of presence with people and to not focus on what's wrong with them or what they should change. You know, sometimes what happens is we get afraid, especially if people have like significant mental health problems, we get really afraid for them. And so we live in this feeling of fear and then we try to fix them or do stuff to them. And there's a really powerful thing that happens in all relationships that like Sid, Sid Banks said, he said, the only problem in any relationship is negative thought. So you in yourself, you get rid of negative thought 
And as you do that, your wisdom comes in and it tells you what you can do in this relationship that would make it better, that would um, make it easier, that there's something that you can do. But when we start focusing on something we have no control over, we get really more scared. Like, okay, I got to think harder. I got to do more. I got to try harder. I got to say the right thing. I got to not upset them. You know, so we're living in our own thinking about this other person that we have no control over and we're not paying attention to moi. So it's like, you know, we're not like, okay, I need to change my state of consciousness. I need to go deeper because if I go deeper, then again, everything in your world changes and your relationship with that person will change and you'll see how to interact with them in a more loving way. loving for you and them. And you get new ideas about things to do. Like you get insights like, oh, you think this, or you think I think this, you know, it's like, it's funny how it pops in your head, right? It's like, if you're really listening, like you, you start to see what the, the problem is. So that's a very general answer to a very general question, but um, I think that the trick is to focus on you and not them. Not trying to fix the relationship, you know, because the deal is the relationship's not really broken. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just that people get out of balance in themselves because they get thinking too much and that insecure thinking looks like it's real and important and needs to be addressed. You know how you got to like, yeah, I'm going to talk to him about this too. And it seems like it needs to be addressed when it comes in your head. It seems like it's a, it's what I, it's what I call a, a God thought. You know, it's like that negative thought comes in and it really feels like you need to follow it and try to fix it and change it and share it and, you know, do all this stuff with it. But it's just a negative thought. If you can talk about anything, you can talk about ways of interacting that help to make a better relationship. But it's different when you're trying to fix the other person, right? You know what I mean by that? It's like when you're trying to fix a problem, you don't really know the problem exists because it's just you in that state of mind. Now, I'm not talking about if you're, you know, getting beaten by someone or if you're chained up in a room somewhere or you know, things like that. I, I'm, I'm just talking about general things, but in, in general, the problem relationships that we have are because we get insecure and then we start doing things that are coming from that place of insecurity. And we don't know what, we don't even know sometimes that we're insecure, right? Because it's so normal. <laughs> we don't, we don't uh, even recognize that that's insecure thinking. It seems like that's this life. So for me, anyway, what I do is I just try to get more secure and go deeper. Does that answer your question, Laura? Do you have something else specific? That helps tremendously. Yeah, I, I had a situation um, recently with my daughter and, um, it, you know, it was a lot of, I, I was upset about it and um, I did get new thinking um, that you said, you know, wisdom, it took, it was over a few weeks, a month, whatever. And, um, I did get new thinking, new ideas about it. Um, I guess, you know, if I want to go a little bit further, um, uh, she blew up at me and, you know, and I left and, um, you know, I've, I've talked to her since, but I, I initiated, you know, and, um, <laughs> I just, I'm just trying to show love. I'm just trying to be there. I'm just trying to be that steady, stable person. That's all I can think of doing right now. Mm -hmm. I don't share this with my, my kids. They're grown. My kids are grown. So, but part of me wants to share it with, with my kids, you know, to say a little something here and there, but I don't even know how, I don't know where to begin, but anyway, back to the main issue. Um, this is all I can do right now. I mean, it feels better. We are talking you know, she responded because I just tried to stay that steady, loving person. Yeah, that, that, that's all you can do. And then, you know, it's the thing about wisdom is it never gives you the game plan. 
right? It, it's like, you just get what you can see to do right now. And you just got to trust that the next piece will come. So it's kind of like life is like this big jigsaw puzzle that with all the pieces floating around and the one piece comes down and then another piece comes down and you start to, after you've lived your life a while, you start to think that you know what the picture is. And then the next piece comes down and it's like, wait a minute, that doesn't go there. Wait, wait a minute, that's not, that's not the way we're going. We're going over here. But the only way you can go is over here. And then something really magical happens here that if you went that way, it wouldn't have happened anyway. So it's just being in that place of just kind of lighten up your spirit, come back to like listening to yourself and see what it is that you can see for yourself about that. You know, like I'll give you an example. My husband and I were, um, we lived together for like five years before we got married. And then I finally, I finally had to trick him into marrying me. And so we got married and, um, and then after we were married, um, I, he started to get a little reactive with me and he, I'd say something and he'd go, rawr, 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 rawr. I'm like, wow, what's, what's he upset about? What's wrong with him? <laughs> and then, um, I was in the kitchen and I said something to him and I thought, oh, what am I doing that is that he's reacting to? What am I doing? And all of a sudden, my wisdom pops in my head and says, oh, you think that now that you're married, his business is your business. I was like, oh, that's true. And so everything he was reacting to was me trying to get him to live a healthier life, right? Eat better, exercise. Like, uh, and, and I didn't even realize I was doing it, but it was true. And so I just learned to mind my own business instead of make his business my business. So I kept my mind at my business, right? And, and so some, you know, it's just be open to that. So the more transparent you get with her and you say, look, I don't know what I'm doing here, but I really want you to know that I'm really wanting to have a good relationship with you. And I really hope we can go in that direction. And then you can share whatever you know. You, like what I did with my family is I'd say, you know, what I'm learning is this. I'm doing this, I'm learning this new thing. And what I see is that talking about how awful life is and isn't a great idea. You know, so it's like you, you kind of give people like, my teacher told me, he said, it's like you give them a little spoonful. And if they take it, you give them another spoonful. And if they take that, you give them another one. And when they choke, you tell a joke and leave them laughing. So you don't have to like sit down and like, let's talk about the three principles, but you can just like say what I'm learning about here is that I, I just don't want to be in a bad feeling with you. I really want to have a good feeling. So if you can see anything for me, let me know. I'm, I got big ears. That's good. That's great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Who else? Anybody else got something? You any insights or things they want to share? Well, we wait. Um, I, I I love what Laura was saying because um, I can see it as, as a mom that. Um, every time I try to sort of put the principles in my daughter's head or, you know, without realizing that she is the principles, you know, is, is in her or, uh, or just wake her up to the fact of what's going on because I'm suffering. I'm suffering seeing her stumble, you know, across things she can't resolve or she's, she's, she's suffering or she's in in a place that I can't let myself have her being in that feeling. Mm -hmm. And then I try to fix her. Mm -hmm. And what, what happens, what, what, I, what I see for myself is that I stop seeing her. I stop mm -hmm. seeing her. 
and that's where my my connection sort of mm-hmm. looks like it's disconnected mm-hmm. um, and then again what's happened for me is that uh, I think I would like myself to be or come across as a loving always understanding um, allowing person and uh, what wisdom provided me with is to put limits harsh limits with Mm -hmm. my mom with a lot of people that I didn't know and I don't when I'm doing that I feel so uncomfortable it's like when Christine nicely but you know say with the dog said I love you more than life you know but but now just lie down (laughs) like that's when you're when you have that security in your relationship you're not coming from this amount of um uh and and i'm telling you from being completely insecure about this yeah okay like Mm -hmm. moments where i'm like like that and then something comes out from me that is is being very for me very harsh probably for many other parents you know who would have been the everyday what they say or or to my mom you know to people that I'm so afraid of losing the relationship with them but I managed to say look up to here and no more that's it and that's been loving for me and and for her and and for all of us Um, so that's what wisdom gave me that maybe my idea of being loving and you know and fixing people and it, it wasn't as loving as I thought more the more secure thinking um, I hope I hope that's helpful that's super helpful I, I think the other thing too is that that what you're talking about is when you do that you let them come to you <laughs> oh, sorry horse outside, um, is that you let them come to you instead of you trying to put it in them, you know? And there's there's a power in just getting quiet and connecting with people in you, is that it will happen. It will happen. Things will change in a positive way, one way or the other. And sometimes you have to keep a distance with people because, you know, they just get a little bit caught up in their negative thinking and they're, they're really hard to uh, uh, talk to sometimes. But if you know that someday I'm getting in there, you know, it's like you keep that feeling of hopefulness. You keep that feeling of knowing that there is a way and you keep the negative thinking out of your head. That's the deal. It's like our little egos get in there, especially with our family, right? And they're like, our mother or our children it's all about us and so our insecurity gets in there and we want to fix them so we can feel better (laughs) and we have to we have to remember that they have to see and they have to awaken and they have to do that and all we can do is mirror that to them we just live in that feeling and pretty soon they'll look in the mirror and be like oh there i am oh okay you know and that's kind of that awakening that happens it's it, it's, it's really easy to get kind of caught in talking about things or sharing things or fixing people. Like I, I do that with my grandchildren sometimes. Like I really want to like, just call me up, will you? I can fix you. And they're like, not really wanting that. And I have to be very calm and, oh, okay, well, can I help you at all with that? Let me know. I'd be happy to, you know, but that's it. That's all I can do. And then I have to stop thinking about it. Because if I catch it, if I start worrying, I start getting caught up in my own ego about it and thinking that somehow this is something, a problem I need to fix, that actually feeds it. Yeah, if I could chime in with something, that's something that I could actually relate to, uh, Carolina, with the daughter. I've got a 15-year-old and I've got a 12-year-old. And right now I feel like the love I feel for them and trying to fix them and what I was doing previously, it doesn't really work. It doesn't come across as love or it doesn't come across the way I think it does. But to totally just let go and just show up as me sort of thing and then let them be curious and come back to me. I'm slowly starting to see the 
this or that, but it's hard because it's going against everything what I've sort of known of my learnt behaviour, but just knowing my wisdom telling me to just let go because it is my ego. When I try to break it down and say, why do I have to act like that? Because I think they don't respect me. They don't take their dad serious. They think their dad's an idiot. They think, and there's a million thoughts that, but when I throw away them thoughts, they're just my children that are 15 and 12, just finding their way. So I've just got to see with that and just let them show up as myself. And then hopefully they'll come back with the curiosity and start asking me questions. But I know that's the route to go down and I am going to try to stick with it. Even though I let my thinking get in the way sometimes, but just knowing that it's, it's deeper than that, just have trust. Mm -hmm. I call those, those years, Derek, the wonder years. You wonder if you'll live, you wonder if they'll live, you wonder why you had kids. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, in that case, I'm in the middle of my wonder years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it's true. It, you know, it's kind of like um, you want to protect your kids, right? You want to, like, make sure they have a good life. You want them to be happy. And so when they're unhappy, it's like, oh, my God, my child is not doing well. And you just got to remember, they have to go through life. They've got to learn themselves. They got to go through this. And they have this incredible wisdom within them. And you want to just remember to pull that out and, and trust that. But we all get our little ego in there. Uh, my, my youngest stepson, when he was um, in the ninth grade, I think, he or eighth grade, he um, this is before I came in on the scene, he'd gotten in trouble with the law. And so after we kind of moved in together, we were talking and he said something. And I said to him, well, you know, you always haven't been like that. And I could see the pain and the hurt feelings on his face. I was like, who said that? Like, where did that come from? And I said, oh, I'm so sorry. I just brought up the past and I shouldn't have done that. I'm really sorry about that. You know, but, but it was, it, it's kind of like, seeing him feel pain was like, oh, way worse for me than it was for him, way worse. And I think you just have to kind of remember that, that it, it's just because you're suffering doesn't mean they're even aware of what's going on with them, right? That's kind of what you want, like, hey, wake up. So yeah, you just got to take care of yourself again and just stay in that place of really, uh, checking out how you're coming across and what you're doing and that's as good as you got that's it that's a lot though it is, it is. and when they're kids they kind of fall into that trap that you can mold them so they, they need what you're giving them but in actual fact, yeah. they should be just left alone because they can mold themselves yeah. yeah yeah and when they get older they start to think they can mold themselves a lot easier and they're doing it differently than how you would do it you know, and it's like, no, 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 no. Oh, mm. take a deep breath and say, oh, well, use your wisdom. You know, my dad told me he's a funny, funny guy. He was a really wise man. And um, I was a senior in high school and I was going off to college. And he said, you know, your mother told me that I needed to talk to you about the birds and the bees. Now I'm in a station wagon driving 120 miles with my father. I'm like, oh, oh my God, don't talk to me. Don't you think I know that by now? And, and so he said to me, he said, well, as far as um, alcohol goes, like I know you drink, but you're very responsible. So I trust that you'll use your common sense. He said, as far as drugs go, he said, I, I smoked marijuana in college. It made me sicker than a dog. So I trust you'll listen to your wisdom and know what to do about that. And then he said, and as far as sex goes, well, I don't need to talk to you about that. I was like, Whew. but you know, it's, it was funny because what he said is that I trust that you'll use your wisdom. And that stuck with me forever. Like he trusted me and there's a, such a powerful thing that we can do with our kids to, to let them know that we trust them and that their wisdom would guide them, guide you know them in, in the best way for them. 
I can see that you can be powerful in so many different ways, you know, Christine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, uh, I'm going to take that from your dad and hand it down to my children. Cause, yeah. No, because when you tell them, if, my children, if I was to tell them that, because according to them, their dad sort of knows everything. <laughs> telling them that the wisdom in them, I, be, I believe in the wisdom in you. That will yeah. make them believe in the wisdom in them. And when they start, yeah, I love that, Christine. Thanks. Yeah, it, it, I'll tell you, it came to me many times, especially times when I should was in situations I shouldn't have been in. <laughs> and, and, you know, it's like, oh, I got to use my wisdom here. I got to get out of here. You know, and I, and I did. I was, I was able to pretty much get through my college years unscathed. But um, it, it was just an empowering thing. And as a parent, you like letting kids know that they have the answers within them, that they do know what to do if they quiet down and don't get caught up trying to please everybody and, you know, do what everybody else is doing, that they think for themselves and that just sharing that with them is what a gift. Doesn't mean they'll always listen to it, but, you know, that's what being a kid is learning that, oh yeah, hmm, that wasn't a very good idea. How, how's the dog anyway, Chris? The dog all right now, yeah? Oh, now the other dog has come and wants me to throw the ball. So that's what this is all about, is that she's uh, decided I've been on the computer long enough. She's got this new thing. I'm, I'm online all the time, right? Yeah. And she's like, okay, let's go. Uh, I, and I threw the ball earlier. So she had the balls. And now she brings it to me. And then she walks over there and barks. Like throw the darn ball. What's, what's your problem? Yeah, she's funny. She's very smart. She's smarter than the other two. And she kind of runs circles around everybody, but she can be very demanding. <laughs> so as uh, you know, that's just the dog decided. <laughs> um, you, you've been so generous with your time, Christine. Uh, I don't know if there's any last questions or something you would like to know. Um, uh, and uh, or any insights that you had or things you want to share that you maybe felt a little like, like you wanted to. I think for me, there's one insight that I've always kind of felt and that. I've always, I've always felt guided, like, for me, I've always kind of felt like, right, okay, there's a purpose that I'm here, there's a purpose that I'm here now, sitting here, and I've always kind of felt like, I've not really been in control of that, mm. and, I've, you know, I've never really been in control of, of my life, and for me, that's, it used to kind of feel like, okay, so I don't know where I'm going in my life. I don't know what I'm doing. And then I came across this. And then now it's so freeing to kind of feel that and to kind of, to have that freedom just to kind of be, okay, let's just enjoy the next chapter and let's enjoy what's coming around the corner. Yeah, that's the fun of it, isn't it? You know, I often, people are always worrying. I don't know how this is going to turn out. I don't know what I want to be when I grow up, blah, blah, blah. It's like, why would you want to know that? Mm. If you know everything, like, what's the point of living? It'd be boring. Mm. You already know what's happening. The, the ideas, the wonder, the newness, what's coming next is like, wow. It's like, you know, when you read a book and you read the chapter and it's like, what, what's in the next chapter? Or you're watching Netflix and you're, you know, doing a, a series and you got to watch the next episode because you want to see what's going to happen. That's, that's the fun of life. Like, wow, what's coming next? Like I used to get up and think, Oh God, what's coming next? You know, because my thinking was so negative, but now it's like, wow, I wonder what magic could happen. You know, like it's a, uh, uh, the un living in the unknown, living in the, being in that place of not knowing 
is to me the safest place in the world. Because when I think I should know, then I'm worrying because I don't know. <laughs> you know, the truth is you don't know. So you can then think about it from now till kingdom come, but you're not going to know. So accepting that, I, I don't know, but knowing that you also have the wisdom in you in the moment to do what you need to do in the moment, that's where the safety comes in. So you cannot know and be okay and also know that whatever you have and whatever you have inside of you will help you to deal with whatever comes your way. That's a blast. That's, it's like giving up on that. It's like, you know, we, we all try to control things in our head. It's really funny, isn't it? It's like we try to control our life by thinking. Like somehow that's going to do something, you know, but we all do it. And, and we all try to like figure out like what's wrong so we can fix it or what, what we need to do to be happy and all this thinking we're doing instead of just being, just being ourself, just being that feeling and then listening for that guidance to come from within. And what comes to you is way better than you could think. I mean, you think about whatever level of consciousness you're at, that's as good as your thinking is. That's all you got. So if you want to live at a higher level of consciousness, you can't use that thinking. You're, you will never get there. You'll just stay right there or get worse. But if you really let go and say, I don't know, I'm, I'm just going to listen and see what happens, your level of consciousness rises. And then the thinking you get is totally different, like totally different. Like when I first learned this, if I had thought about what my perfect life would be, I wouldn't have been able to imagine this. It wouldn't have been in, in the cards at all. So it's like you get better than you could think because what you think is just what you know so far. That's, that's not what you want. You want something beyond that. Anybody else got anything? Well, I hope that uh, th this allows you to, to see that connecting with humans is absolutely the gas. It's the best thing in the world. And when, when we're in connecting with ourselves on the inside, we connect, we can connect with everybody and anybody. And that's where the new juices come, you know, like you talk to somebody and then you get a new idea. It's like, wow, where, where did that come from? And so to me, that's what the principles bring to us is the ability to see how to get out of our own way and how to live in the magic of, of the unknown and knowing that your security and strength and happiness and all of that's inside of you. So you're not dependent on it, the world being a certain way for you to be okay. It's hard to see that sometimes when you're in the middle of distress, but it's just kind of, you got to kind of, it's like, it's like you got to turn your head this way, you know, and then you start thinking, oh, what about this? What about this? No, no, over here, look this way. Oh, over there. You know, and, and eventually, if you keep pushing yourself in the general direction, it'll, you'll start to see more and more. And your relationships in general get better. And I guess that's, that's, that's as good as it gets in this reality. It's that feeling that's inside. Christine, you are a dream to have here. It was, we, we absolutely uh, wish to have you in this series yeah. since the beginning and to have you here is a dream come true. It's been incredible. Um, thank you so much. And where can people find you if they want to contact you? Um, I'm on Facebook um, and uh, my um, email is my name, Christine J. Heath at Gmail. 
And um, uh, also a 3PGC has all my contact information, three principles, global community. We'll, we'll put all the links. And yeah. Also in case uh, there's something else missing. I, I, I'm gonna give a little plug to my, uh, my podcast that Judy Sedgman and I are doing. It's called Psychology Has It Backwards. And uh, that's free and available to people um, on any of the podcast networks. So um, I've had, we're having such a gas doing that. I just love it. It's just Judy, Judy Sedgman and I do it. And she's such an intelligent, beautiful woman that uh, the two of us have a really great time. We're kind of BFFs and we have a good time sharing what we know and kind of be a little bit... Uh, we're a little, we, we decided to take on the world of psychology head on instead of trying to be nice about it. So um, we're, we're uh, doing our best to do that. Yes, you, you can find the podcast on, um, on, on our group on how to connect with humans is there. We had, we had uh, Judy Sedgman, don't you look at my cat, um, uh, opening series three. So, uh, and we talk about the podcast, so, but again, we'll, we'll put it there again. Mm -hmm. So that's always available and we'll, we'll direct you to that. Um, and uh, so next week, we're going to have uh, Ivalo and Fjord uh, from Greenland. And, um, oh, all right. Yeah. And, oh, are you there? Can you unmute yourself? Hi. <laughs> oh, there she is. Hello, hello. <laughs> Between feeding children and, you know, what life is at the moment. How are you? How are you? <laughs> I'm looking forward to yeah. next week. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, we're very privileged to have you next week. And um, so, Ivan is going to be talking about listening which as far as we know is very close to your heart um so if you want to say just a few words and then uh we'll just say goodbye and see people next week yeah, well um when i read second chance of sydney banks um it's before i ever even knew about the three principles that I saw that I haven't listened all my life. So it was a shock. It was a truth shock for me to, um, by getting hit by some very, very deep truth of that I haven't been listening at all. So I, it's one of the starting points of my learning of this understanding. So I'm looking forward to talk more about it next time <laughs> we're all really excited yeah. <laughs> so it's a pleasure christine again thanks so thank much thank you oh th thank you so much for um inviting me to do this i had a really great time i just love getting out and talking with people especially because on, on online we get to talk to people around the world like what a what a gift that is right it's like uh it's amazing just amazing the world we live in so thank you so much i really enjoyed myself and i hope that everybody has a really good week yeah stay safe out there so thank you so much thank you to everybody for, for thank you. making the thank time you. to be thank here so you. we'll see you soon bye thanks for sharing everybody bye. aloha, aloha. aloha.